Alrighty, yeah, welcome back to SF Custom Cycles. I just want to put a video together for you guys to run through uh, some stuff that's going on with the 120R engine. So basically the bike essentially, um, this well this motor was purchased brand new back in the day, early 2000s, um, for a night train. Now the RX kit was purchased, which obviously as many of you guys know, hurricane heads and also an update in your compression on the piston allowance, which is, uh, I think it was 12.1 to one, I think by memory. Um, now the thing is with this machine is during its journey, it's had detonation issues, uh, a knock issue, just certain things, right? So there's certain characteristics on why now this bike is at this point. So the machines come here, motor's out. Now it's got an SNS crank uh, in it. It's not your screaming eagle that comes out with the uh, the engine from new. With the SNS, they do have quite. Uh, I've got to word this correctly, but the tolerances they allow for for rod throw and stuff like that are quite excessive. Um, I know with the screaming eagle, it's typically five thousandths to thirty five thousandths uh, allowance. Now, this this crank has been split, updated. Um, by memory, the big ends have had, um, they've been machined because they're out of, out of round, out of crew, and it's had an oversized um, bearing set put in. Now, the front rod with the throw, there's ju it's just, to me, I, I don't like it. The rear is like, you can feel that, right? There's that pinch of throw, whereas the front, Oh, she's a flogged out old four-speed gearbox. Like, I just don't like it. So we're gonna pull the crank out. Now, the crank pin is being welded. Um, the hard thing is with s, s the crank pin has got a spread on it where it really bites in and has really, really, really good clamping allowance um, when it's press fitted. Like I said, it's had the, the crank pin welded, but we're gonna unpick that and try and get this apart. Fingers crossed we can. The reason why we're doing this right, this is, this is, um, apparently come from a, a reputable um, crankshaft rebuilder. However, when it comes to stuff here, I cannot not pull that apart and check it. Because going off someone else's word and going through a build, and I'm gonna go through some other stuff here, the heads, some pistons that have come out and everything else and go through a story with this. I can't warrant everything else thinking, oh, no, she'll be right, I, can, I just can't. So we've got all the, uh, case bolts out it's going to get split and then uh, we'll organize to get this thing separated if we can hopefully we can and then we can go through and we can dial in exactly what the right ends are doing um you know just the shimming allowance to for the throws is another thing so i'm going to go through all that 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 to me needs to be re-checked as a rule of thumb to then eliminate that as an issue then moving forward. I've cc the heads. Um, you know, there's just certain things that are going on with this um, that I'm not overly happy with. So what we've got to do is try and piece this thing back together with new pistons, the cams themselves, you know, the gear drives, it's got s, &S on the back of it, which is great, but someone's shaved the numbers off. Like it's an off the shelf camshaft, you know? So we've got to go through stuff like that. Another thing was, you know, even with pistons, these have been milled down. I get it for a decomp thing, but I just, I wouldn't see myself moving to this area. So we've got to work out a true comp allowance. The cams aren't the typical 267s that come out of it. So we've got to work in with a camshaft combo to what goes on. Now I've done a, a piston to deck height check, which we are at zero. Um, which is great. So we can work off sweat volume here. Um, then we can move into the comp with the pistons, head gasket thickness, and also CCing the heads to, to work out exactly where we're going. Pump fuel allowance, obviously. Um, we don't want things detonating and carrying on. So yeah, this is just a part of something that goes on here. I have got other 120 motors that are, that are gonna come in. They all get the same treatment. Like I, I get, we can, some people like to get away with certain things so far, but on my radar, 
do it once, do it right. We'll make the crank, you know, if, if this is salvageable or within reason of what it's meant to be, you know, within a maintenance spec and, and a service allowance and blah, blah, blah. But we just need to start from the bottom. It is the heartbeat of the motor. Just remember this thing rotates very, very quickly and we've got to work our way up. So this is just a bit of a start to some content with the 120 stuff. Um, as you guys out there know with the 120s, these heads are bangers. You know, really good port job. Um, the valve sizing, everything works really nice. Um, obviously, depending on what we do with the combo with the cam, we'll run through the valve springs, seat pressure free length, core binding, all the stuff that needs to go on um, and get this thing back together and, and get it happy again. But I'm just not happy with a lot of stuff. Um, which I'm sure you guys can respect because you know when you're spending X amount of money on a motor um, If it's in someone's hands, you want it coming back You know Mickey Mouse, so Yeah, bit here to a uh, bit here to go through but um, It's just a part of what goes on anyway Cheers